All right, I want to let's, let's flip over to the Big Ten because the Big Ten kind of got flipped on its head this weekend. Indiana went into Rutgers and lost. Illinois went into Maryland and lost. Wisconsin went into Marquette and beat a team that just twenty gave twenty six to uh, to Baylor, coming off of a loss at home to Wake Forest. It looks like Purdue is probably the favorite to win the conference. I'm like, what the hell is going on in this league, To it's it, Purdue's really good, and then the rest of them, it, it's they're very similar. It's a very balanced conference. It's a very balanced conference. Uh, Rutgers is as tough a place, is a tough a team to play as anybody because they're just tough as shit, and they're going to figure out ways to just compete. And then they're there at the end, and then things are going to happen. Like that's just what's going to happen. You look at the rest of the conference. Penn State is shooting the shit out of the ball. Iowa is going to Iowa. Like I, I don't know what what you want me to say here, Doster. I'm sitting here like it's a tough place, top to bottom, and it's going to be very balanced once again. The only team that I'm looking at, what is it, Michigan State is down towards the bottom in terms of Ken Palm. Like that, what's up yeah, with that? Like yeah. so is Illinois. So is Illinois. Like, like, and those are teams that we're expected to be towards the top. It's a very balanced conference, and it's tough the, because the it's so with well Michigan, sounded. Yeah, the issue, the issue with Michigan State has everything to do with injuries and Madi Sissoko right. coming back to earth, right? Like if you – when you don't have Malik Hall and you don't have Jaden Akins and you didn't go out and recruit um, a whole bunch of people out of the portal and you already only had like nine guys and you didn't have a backup big guy and now the guy that we thought was going to be a great big guy for you is like not anymore. It just kind of, you know, it's – they're basically playing with six guys. Like it, right. there's – what are you going to do? You know, this hey, is- I will say, hey, hey, Fanta, we weren't wrong about Maryland last year. We were wrong about Turgeon last year. Yes. Ah. We weren't wrong. Ah. Um, we were we were wrong about Turgeon. We put too much into Turgeon. Good. Like good you put work. you put a hell of a coach with that bunch. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. We weren't mm-hmm. wrong, Fanta. We weren't yeah. wrong. And and this should not come as a massive surprise. They're, they're one of the surprises. If and and people are going to say Maryland's the biggest surprise because they are. I picked them top five in a league on our very own DTF podcast Big Ten preview. You guys Great remember, that, right? You Great guys pick. remember that? I I went I went all in on Maryland. You guys were like, oh, I know. What are you talking about? You're gonna Victory have to wear. Tuesday. You're Victory gonna have to wear Tuesday. a hot dog suit. Someone get this guy a chicken hand, chicken uh, a chicken well, mask. Kevin Willard has done a nice job in the preseason of really selling low. and and then his team ends up outperforming that. That's what he's at his best, guys. If you look at his best teams at Seton Hall, he did better when his teams were sort of underranked and underselected and under the radar, and then they ended up coming on, coming on, playing with toughness and winning. So for me, guys, this is why the hire of Willard at Maryland made so much sense because Seton Hall is a difficult job in college basketball, Mm -hmm. and he made them a consistent winner and did things the right way he recruited well he had such great x's and o's that's never going to be a question now you hand him the keys to a program that at the end of the day is one of the great brands in college basketball with a fan base that's just waiting look at the gold rush on friday night against illinois they showed maryland felt like maryland again on friday night that's fun for college basketball. People I'm don't sh- understand how good that environment is. Okay. <sighs> when Maryland's at their best, there's what, like, I think they, the, the Xfinity Center holds 16,000 people. It right? is unreal. In that. There are students on both of the lengths of the court, about 10 rows of students. And then on the, uh, the end where the, the visiting team shoots free throws after the game, it's a wall, a wall of students, right? They're loud. They're drunk. They they cuss you out, right? They are so incredibly inappropriate that it's probably rated R just to go sit in that <laughs> building, right, and go listen to them. Um, hey, I have a great video of shutting them up, of, of somebody shutting them up. Great video. Of shutting it, was was shut it you that shut yes. them up? Yes. Yeah, I could. Okay. <laughs> so it's a, hey, it's, it's a great place. It's a great, great a, place. Let me tell you something. And Friday. they are they are like. And they are good this year. Like that to me, that was yeah. why that was why I love this hire. And I don't mean to cut you off, Fanta, but like you know that Willard Willard is going to get his guys to play their balls off, right? They are going yes. to play hard. They're going to play tough. And you, they, they it, there's no to your point about uh, Huber Davis, To there, yeah. it's you're not going to play if you're not playing hard as hell for Willard. That's right. 
And he also hired all the guys that's going to get him a bunch of talent out of the DMV area. And you know how much talent is in the DMV area. The last right. thing that I'll say is I, I had this conversation with someone the other day. And they and I was like, you it, you should be – no one can accomplish what Willard accomplished at Seton Hall. And so they were like, what did he actually accomplish? And I said, getting – Making that program be consistently top 30, top 35 in the country, making that program get to five to six straight NCAA tournaments, making them a Big East contender right now in this day and age in the arms race of all the high major division one college basketball programs like that. That is not an easy thing to do. You got to understand what you're recruiting to and you got to understand what that program is at this point right now. And the fact that he got them there should tell you everything you need to know about that group. And now that you gave him a program with all the facilities, with all the talent in the world, with all the, the, what you want to recruit to, like he's going to, he's going to bring them back. I feel, I feel very strongly about that. And I felt very strongly about that before this started. That's why I said they were going to be a top five team in the big 10 fancy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, they identified in the portal really well. I mean, they brought in Jameer young and Don Carey. Those guys are, not just really good players, but they're they're leaders, guys. They're I mean, I, I covered Don a little bit in his time at Georgetown. He was a part of that Big East tournament championship team that's mm-hmm. Georgetown. He was a huge reason for it. You know why? He showed up to the garden that week and said, We're gonna win this thing and I'm gonna lead us. I'm gonna be a leader. He's a leader. Like he's a, he's a guy that steps up and makes things happen. Jameer Young came up huge in the Illinois game. But not just that, he Kevin Willard inherited some quality talent, which is what yeah. T.O. was bringing up. We were buying into Maryland's talent. And Dante Scott's playing the best basketball of his career. Shouldn't be a surprise. Dante Scott's out. He is one of the matchup nightmares in college basketball. Did you hear the story that... that, uh, that this is a great story. Yeah, the story that Humble told on uh, on the broadcast. I did so not. When Willard, when Willard got there, like the first workout that he put Dante Scott through, he put a 25-pound weight vest on him. And he was like, you're going to go, go work out with this thing on. And like, obviously by the end of the workout, he was like, I'm dead. I think this is, this is really hard. Takes the weight vest off. And he's like, all right, now go try to move and see how good you feel. And he's like, yeah, I feel great right now. Feel bouncy. And Willard goes, now imagine if you lost 25 pounds that you need to lose, how good you'd feel every day. And that kind of like made it click for him. And now he's in the best shape of his life. That was, so that's the Hummel who told that one. Yeah. Hummel told that. That is a great story. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll say, Donald Carey, Jameer Young, they're both shooting uh, a combined like 25% from three right now. Carey is a career 38% three-point shooter, and Jameer Young is a career 36% three-point shooter. Yeah. Once those guys start making shots the way that they've made shots their entire lives, Maryland's going to take a step up to another level. I do want to ask you guys, um, the other surprise team is Purdue, right? Just how we've talked a lot about them on the field of 68, so I don't want to go like too in-depth on it, just but – I guess, T.L., let's go to you first because you, you're the one that has strong opinions on the Big Ten. What What is their ceiling, right? Are we kind of seeing them at their best right now? Do you think there's room to improve or just, just, just the kind of thing where, like, teams got to figure out what to do with Zach Eady and it's very hard to figure out what the hell to do with him? Um, and I, I don't know. What, what are your What's your take on this team? I, I want to be very clear here. I root for Purdue. When I watch Purdue play, like, I, I, I actively like I, – I love what Painter does. I love what they're about. I love I love everything about Purdue. That being said, no electric guard on that roster uh, in terms of a Jaden Ivey type of dude. They, they like that fit, though. They, they like fit, that though. They they do. But you get NCAA tournament. You got to go get one. You got to find a guy who can go get one. Uh, look look at last year. Look who won last year. How they ended like how the Final Four ended up. Colin Gillespie could get you one. Paolo Bancaro could get you one. Caleb Love could get you one. Ochai Abaji, Christian Brown could find ways to get you one. Like you got to have somebody. I'm not sure Purdue has that. What I will say is I, I think they're a second weekend tournament team. Uh, I they're gonna beat the heck out of somebody. I don't think that's a Final Four national championship team. I still cheer for them. I just worry because you have to have that. Yeah, I cheer for him. I cheer for him because I I think there's a lot going on in college basketball. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot of different ways to attack. A lot of of ways to skin a cat. But I I like the way they operate. I like the way Painter coaches his guys. And it's just like they do it the right way in my mind. And I I hope that they go do well. But it's just like one of those things where at the end of the day – Having a McDonald's All American helps. 
like at least on the perimeter, and they just don't have that type of dude. Oh no. Yeah, the, I, I will tell you this though. I, I they enjoy playing without Jaden Ivy out there because um, it got to the point last season where it was a little bit too much like freelance, right? Where it would be like we're trying to run this, and then Jaden Ivy would just break off the play and go try to get his own. And yes, to a point, you kind of need that guy, but it also was kind of limiting when that guy isn't fitting entirely in with what the offense should be and the way it's clicking right now. Does that make sense? Like when you look at the best teams that Painter has had, it's just you guys that understand exactly what they're supposed to do and exactly how to operate around this monster that they have at the five. Right. Yeah. Um, and the, the ways that he can kind of create opportunities through people just because of the attention that that monster is going to end up uh, drawing from um, everybody that they end up playing. So I hear what you're saying. Um, I do think that, I will say, I, I think that they are enjoying playing this year better yeah, without having Jaden. Yeah, I, I'm, that's kind of where I'm at with them too, right? When you don't have, um, if they had even someone like a, I don't even know if I want to say Carson Edwards, but like someone that was a little bit more experienced in the backcourt. And you, like we could end up, uh, it could end up being something where like we look really dumb saying this because Fletcher Lawyer ends up being that guy that can go get you a shot, even if it's something that, like as simple as just running him off of one of those like, uh, the floppy action or a staggered screen, something like that. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think at the end of the day, you need like NBA guys to win a national title. If you go back and look at all the teams that won titles, how many of them have won titles without a whole bunch of NBA guys on the roster? And who on Purdue's roster is an NBA guy? Like even Zach Eady, I don't know if he ends up like he'll probably play in the like be drafted and someone will take him and be like, yeah, you know what? It, he can probably do what Bowman does, but I, you know what I mean? Like, where, where are the pros? Fancy, where are the pros? I don't know. I mean, it's not like Kansas was loaded up with great they pros. Two first-round picks. Yeah, but Ochai Baji's not doing anything right now. First-round pick, NBA guy. First-team All-American. So, what do you think about Zach Eady's pro prospects? He's seven foot four. I mean, I, I mean, I think someone, like someone's going to draft him and use him the way they use Bobon, where it's like a kind of a matchup specific, super uber efficient guy um, against teams where you can use drop coverage. You, he can get you 15 to 20 minutes here. There's going to be matchups where you can't play him at all. Um, he'll be a useful piece for a matchup specific situation for a smart NBA franchise that that needs in like an uber efficient monster guy at the five. I'm in on him. Uh, if you're calling him an elite eight team, we don't know who's on the other side of that matchup. It, the Purdue's loss to St. Peter's last year is beyond mind boggling. It's beyond mind boggling. But it's yeah. not. But it's not. Yeah, it is. Sorry, but okay. It so what, we we agree to disagree, <laughs> but I'll let you go first. Go ahead. I, I think that it sums is. up this I, podcast I, perfectly, right? This that loss was mind boggling, but it's not. But it is. But it's yeah. not. <laughs> I think they're final four good. I think that they've got the biggest matchup nightmare in college basketball. And that's exemplified by what we talked about on field of 68 after dark one night after Patrick young said, you got to front or that you can't front Edie. John that's Henson funny. says you got to front him. So we got yeah. analysts not knowing what's I asked Rutgers yesterday. I sat in on Rutgers practice and I asked multiple assistants and, and Steve Peichel. And if anybody knows, it's Rutgers because they know how to defend. I said, so guys, how would you defend Zach Eady? And every coach had a different answer in how they would do it. In other words, there is not an answer. There is no answer for how you do that. Now you combine. I'm of the mm -hmm. belief, and I'm going to die by this this time around if I have to die. I'm of the belief that I want a backcourt that coexists, that has multiple guys, that plays well together, that plays well together and moves the ball. I want that over one otherworldly individual guard who's going to get me that one bucket. I'm going to rely on team basketball, not just because it's team basketball, but because that team basketball, that backcourt, the 33 assists to just 
eight turnovers for Ethan Morton, Fletcher Lawyer, and Braden Smith, the way that they have come on. I'm going to rely on that surrounding a seven foot four monster who looks like Yao Ming out there this time around. I think this team is better suited to make the final four run in West Lafayette. Go ahead, Tio. You make Edie work every possession defensively. Mm -hmm. You make him work every single possession defensively. That's what St. Peter's did. That's the reason that wasn't necessarily that wasn't necessarily a huge surprise. It was a surprise that they beat them, sure, but how they attacked Edie was very different. And St. Peter's wasn't big. So, like, you you use him not only in ball screens, but you use him in away screens. The guy he's guarding in away screens because he's not going to get out and show. So, like, if you have guys that can shoot, you're very, very, very vulnerable. And I understand they're number one in Ken Palm right now in the country. However, it's just what you need guys to – you need a guy that can get you a shot when everything else breaks down. Because NCAA tournament, everybody scouted well. Like, everybody mm-hmm. scouted well. Look at the last few national championships, Kansas this year. Ochai Abaji, Christian Braun, great college players. Baylor, both of those guards, great college players who can go get you one. Uh, Virginia before that, Kyle Guy, Jerome, Ty Jerome, could go get you one. Villanova in 2018. They, they had, had 37 guards. guys that could go get you one. <laughs> North Carolina in 2017, guys who could go get you one. Like, you have to have that one guy that could go get you one. 